Well, good morning. Can I welcome everybody to the 15th meeting in 2014 of the Infrastructure and Capital Investment Committee. Can I remind everyone in the room to switch off their mobile phones or other devices as they do affect the broadcasting system? Uh, I have received apologies from Mark Griffin and welcome James Kelly, who is attending as a substitute. Item one today is the Housing Scotland Bill. Today we will continue stage two consideration of the Housing Scotland Bill and we will go no further than the end of part five of the bill. I welcome Margaret Burgess, Minister for Housing and Welfare and her officials and Patrick Harvey will be joining us uh, for his amendments. <clears throat> Can I remind members that ministers' officials are here in a strictly supportive capacity. They cannot speak during proceedings or be questioned by members. Everyone should have a copy of the bill as introduced, the second marshalled list of amendments and the second groupings of amendments. There will be one debate on each group of amendments. I will call the member who lodged the first amendment in that group to speak to and move that amendment and speak to all other amendments in the group. I will then call the other members who have, have amendments in the group who should speak to their own amendment and the other amendments in the group, but not move their own amendment at that point. Finally, the member who lodged the first amendment in that group will be asked to wind up the debate and press or withdraw their amendment. Members who have not lodged amendments in the group but who wish to speak should catch my attention in the usual way. If a member wishes to withdraw their amendment after it has been moved, I must check whether any member objects to it being withdrawn. If any member objects, the committee immediately moves to the vote on the amendment. If any member does not want to move their amendment when called, they should say not moved. Any other MSP can move, move it, but I will not specifically invite other members to do so. If no one moves it, I will call the next amendment. The committee is required to indicate formally that it has considered and agreed each section and schedule of the bill, and so I will put a question on each section at the appropriate point. So, um, we are discussing section 26, access to register of letting agents, and I call amendment 59 in the name of Alec Johnson in a group on its own. Alec, to move and speak to your amendment, please. Thank you very much, convener. I move amendment 59 in my name. The reason for this is a simple one, and it is to ensure that those who wish to consult the register uh, can do so without a charge being mm. levied. Uh, members will be aware that I'm the sort of person who quite often likes to see charges put in place to ensure that these measures are self-financing. However, if the register of letting agents uh, and much of this bill is to function effectively, it will rely on the access being given to the register to people who may be of limited means or uh, experiencing hard times. For that reason, I believe it's important that the bill contain a, a clear statement that access to the register will be without a fee. Anyone else? Minister? Okay. Uh, Amendment 59, as we've heard, is aimed at preventing ministers from imposing a charge for making the information contained in the register publicly available. But there is no provision in the bill that allows Scottish ministers to charge a fee. The register will be an online register which can be accessed by all and there will be no charge for that access. The amendment is therefore not required and I would invite Alex Johnson to withdraw his amendment. Alex, do you want to uh, press or withdraw your amendment? And uh, I thank the Minister for the clear statement uh, that she has made that access to the register will be free. Uh, that will be on the public record and therefore I will seek to withdraw my amendment. Okay, does any other member object to the amendment being withdrawn? No. no. So the question is that section 26 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. Uh, the next is registered letting agents training requirements. I call amendment 60 in the name of the... Sorry. Oops, um, Mr Page. Sorry. Sorry. The next one is exemption for solicitor letting agents. I call amendment 134 in the name of Mary Fee and a group of its own. Mary, to move and speak to your amendment. Thank you, um, convener. Um, amendment 134 in my name concerns solicitor letting agents. Many solicitors are letting agents and have been providing services as letting agents for many years. 
solicitor letting agents operate after notifying the Council of the Law Society and work in accordance with standards of practice, practice issued by the Law Society. And any breach of that standard would mean a solicitor would be guilty of professional misconduct and dealt with appropriately. Solicitor letting agents are already registered with the Council of the Law Society and subject to their sanctions. And my amendment would prevent dual regulation of solicitor letting agents. Um, the Law Society are of the view that they are the body who should um, regulate and sanction their letting agents. I do, however, note the concerns that have been brought to my attention from Shelter and the Scottish Association of Landlords and would be happy to meet with the Minister to discuss how this sector could be recognised within registration. Um, and I'll finish my remarks there and I move the amendment in my name. You want to come in on this? Uh, yes, very briefly. Uh, having looked at the, the situation that uh, is likely to exist under the current provisions of the bill, there appears to be uh, duplication in the case yeah. of solicitor letting agents. And for that reason, I'm concerned that this may generate uh, additional cost within the industry, as well as the confusions uh, uh, associated with uh, dual registration for uh, solicitor letting agents. I am, however, also aware that a single uh, system of registration has its advantages, and I'd be very keen to hear if the Minister has any ideas about how this might be uh, simplified uh, and aligned so that it may be easier to impose and not uh, have duplication of cost in some cases. Okay, Minister. Okay, um, thanks, Convener. The, the Scottish Government is committed to improving standards across the letting agent industry. The Bill's provisions intend to give tenants and landlords confidence in a consistent standard of service. The Bill will also improve the framework for dealing with disputes through a single, single authority, the first tier tribunal underpinned by a code of practice. And I'm clear that there will be a register for all letting agents, including solicitors. I'm also clear that all letting agents must comply with the Code of Practice. This will ensure consistency of desired standards across the industry. While I appreciate that solicitors have their own redress arrangements, I'm not convinced that they should be exempted from the regulations set out in the Bill. I recognise that solicitors must be registered with the Law Society. I have already informed the Law Society that I will consider what might be done for solicitors in the registration process to avoid unnecessary duplication in the fit and proper person test. However, I am clear that all those in the industry must be on the register, and that includes solicitors who operate as letting agents. The Scottish Government will work with stakeholders to develop the draft code of practice before going out to full public, public consultation. The Law Society and other professional bodies will therefore have an opportunity to help shape it and it will, to take account of their current requirements. If solicitors want to operate as letting agents, then they must be subject to the same rules as all the other letting agents, and this includes the same code of practice and same means of redress for consumers. I am clear that there has to be a consistent approach to regulating all letting agents, and this amendment would undermine that uh, consistent as a, as a reproach, approach and could result in confusion for landlords and tenants. Any complaint relating to the breach of code of practice for letting agents should be taken to the first tier tribunal, but the Scottish Government will continue to work with stakeholders to ensure that the, regulating of let, the regulation of letting agents works in a joined up way with other regulatory regimes, um, for example, minimising any potential overlap with the Scottish Legal Complaints Commission and the tribunal. And I am clear that the approach taken will be comprehensive and as simple as possible for letting agents and clients. And I would therefore ask Mary Fee to withdraw her amendment. Okay. Mary, can I ask you to wind up and press or withdraw your amendment, please? Yeah. Thank you, um, Convener. I've listened um, carefully to what the, the Minister has said. And while I um, accept that she says that there, there will be consultation, um, I, I don't feel that I have got the commitment that I was hoping to get in the, the, the recognition within the, the legislation for solicitor letting agents. Um, I accept that there has to be one code of practice and, and that there has to be one set of rules which everyone um, 
abides by. But the, the, the Law Society of Scotland are, are simply looking for some form of recognition within the legislation which would recognise that they are a, a body which governs and rules them, themselves and will comply with, with a code. Um, and for, for those reasons, um, I will be pressing my amendment. Okay. <coughs> the question then is that Amendment 134 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. We are not agreed. There will be a division. Those in favour of the amendment, please show. Three. Those against, please show. Four. The result is yes, three, no, four. So the amendment is therefore not agreed. The question then is that sections 27 and 28 are agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. Those are agreed. Um, move to registered letting <coughs> agents training requirements. I call amendment 60 in the name of the minister grouped with amendment 69. Minister, can I ask you to move Amendment 60 and speak to both amendments in the group? OK. Uh, present letting agents are not required to have any training before they can operate a lettings business. And during Stage 1, representatives, representatives of the sector argued strongly that all letting agents should have a level of training before they can be registered. And I've listened to the points made, and I agree that training is an important element of raising standards across the sector as a whole. And for this reason, Amendment 60 provides that training is required as a condition of registration for letting agents. Amendment 60 confers a power on the Scottish Ministers to specify in regulations the content and timing of the training and those persons who must undertake it. This will be done in co consultation with key stakeholders. This will provide Ministers with flexibility to take account of the views of the sector to ensure the training is fit for purpose and to change the training requirements to suit future circumstances within the sector. The power will also allow ministers to require other persons, for example, frontline staff who are carrying out letting agent work, to undertake training should it be considered necessary. Amendment 69 enables a letting agent to be removed from the register if the agent no longer meets the training requirements. These amendments will ensure that a letting agent must demonstrate knowledge of letting agent work in order to be registered and will provide an important additional assurance to consumers in addition to the fit and proper person test. I move Amendment 60. Anyone else wish to speak? Uh, the question is then that Amendment 60 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. Um, I call Amendment 61 in the name of Alec Johnson, grouped with Amendment 71. Alec, to move Amendment 61 and speak to other amendments in the group. We're getting on at tremendous speed, can we not? This is in relation Indulge me to a second. <laughs> register of letting agents giving reasons for decisions. The, the, the purpose uh, of these amendments is to ensure that anyone who's refused access to the uh, register uh, is made aware of the reasons for that refusal. It's reasonable to expect that anyone who uh, has refused access uh, may wish to consider a position and possibly appeal uh, against that decision. And for that reason, it's important that the, the reasons for the refusal uh, are made available uh, at the earliest possible opportunity. The function uh, of Amendment 61 and uh, uh, 71 would be to achieve that objective. I therefore move Amendment 61 in my name. Anyone else got any comments? Okay, Minister. Thank you. Um, I thank Alex Johnson for bringing forward Amendment 61 and 71. Amendment 61 requires Scottish ministers to provide a reason for the decision to refuse, refuse an application to the letting agent register or renewal of application. And Scottish ministers would give reasons as a matter of good practice. However, I do accept that this amendment would ensure that this would happen. And Amendment 71 seeks the same provision for ministers to provide reasons for their decision, but in the context of removing someone from the register. These amendments ensure a consistent approach to the notification provisions, and therefore I support Amendment 61 and 71. Alec, can I ask you to wind There's up? There's nothing I can say to that. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so the question is that Amendment 61 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 29 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yep. We are agreed. 
uh, move to register of letting agent time limit for determining application. I call Amendment 62 in the name of the Minister in a group on its own. Minister, to move and speak to Amendment. Amendment 62 <coughs> requires Scottish Ministers to make a decision on an application for registration or renewal to the register of letting agents within 12 months of receiving the application. The Scottish Ministers will have the power to apply to the first tier tribunal to extend the deadline. But, however, in practice, a decision would be made within a much shorter time scale. If Scottish ministers do not make a decision within 12 months, then it will be taken as tacit approval of the application. And a person whose application has been tacitly approved will stay in the register for one year only before being required to reapply. Scottish ministers will still have the, the power to remove such a person from the register under Section 35 of the Bill if they are not a fit and proper person to carry out letting agency work. And I move Amendment 62. Anyone else wish to speak? Um, yes, of course, Mary. Thank you, Convener. It is really just a, a point of, of clarification. When you say that um, the decision should be made within 12 months, but the reality will it be made within a, a much shorter time scale, what, what time scale are you, are you referring to? Yes. I think every application has to be looked at in its merits, and, and very often a renewal will be much quicker than a, a new application. But this ties in with other uh, registration, the exact same procedures we have for landlord registration and, and other forms of registration. That it's about it just shouldn't lie there uh, and not a decision taken. So that the idea is, if there's a lot of work or information required to be gathered to make a decision, if sufficient applications not provided by the applicant, then there's still an onus to, to get that done within a 12-month period. But with, with all the other registrations that we have, it generally would not take 12 months. It would only be in unusual circumstances. It would take anything close to that. Okay. Okay, the question then is amend that Amendment 62 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. No, you're not. We're not agreed. Okay. So we'll move to a vote. Those in favour of Amendment 62, please show. Five. Those against, please show. Two. The result is yes. Five. No. Two. The amendment is therefore agreed to. I call amendment. We move to register of letting agents monitoring compliance. I call amendment 63 in the name of the minister, grouped with amendments 80 to 84. Minister, can I ask you to move Amendment 63 and speak to all amendments in the group, please? Thank you, Convener. I know that the Committee Stage 1 report identified some concerns about how the regulatory regime, regime will tackle unregistered letting agents. And during the Stage 1 evidence session, letting agent representatives always put for, all, also put forward a strong arg argument for further powers to be added to the enforcement measures contained in the Bill. I have listened to the committee and to stakeholders and have considered th their views in deciding to bring forward these amendments. Amendment 80 enables Scottish ministers to serve a notice requiring a letting agent to provide information. Scottish ministers will use this power to get evidence of whether a letting agent is complying with the Code of Practice or the registration requirements. And this may include relating to how a letting agent manages its client accounts or the type of fees that it may charge to tenants. However, this does not include information that would be unlawful to disclose, for example, where it could be a breach of confidentiality. Amendment 81 allows Scottish ministers to authorise an inspection of a letting agent's business premises in order to check compliance with the regulatory requirements. This power could be used in situations where ministers suspect that an unregistered uh, illegal letting agent is operating or when it would be more appropriate to inspect for compliance with the code of practice on site. Amendment 82 provides that a court can grant a warrant for entry in certain circumstances, including where access has been refused. A court may grant a warrant where it considers that there are reasonable grounds to do so. Amendment 83 sets out further detail about the carrying out of inspections, including in particular provision about giving notice and providing evidence of authorisation. Amendment 80, 84 sets out offences at level 3 on the standard scale for non-compliance with certain aspects of the new powers to obtain information and inspection. 
And finally, Amendment 63 ensures that if a letting agent fails to comply with an inspection or a request to provide information, that failure can be taken into account in determining whether the agent is a fit and proper person. There is overwhelming support for letting agent regulation, and I am clear that the framework should be robust, should have teeth, and that it will be enforced. I want to see a regularity system which boosts the confidence of landlords and, and tenants and which raises the professional standards of the industry. I believe these amendments will help to achieve this, and I move Amendment 63. Anyone else wish to comment? Do you want to say anything else, Minister? No. Okay, the question is that Amendment 63 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. The question is that Section 30 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. Uh, move to fit and proper person criminal record information. I call Amendment 64 in the name of Alec Johnson, grouped with Amendments 65, 66 and 66A. Alec, can I ask you to move Amendment 64 and speak to all amendments in the group? Thank you. I move Amendment 64 uh, to initiate this discussion. Uh, the purpose of my Amendment 64 uh, is to change may to must, a typical amendment that we see often enough. The function in this case uh, is to ensure that uh, the applicants for registration uh, are required to provide a criminal record certificate. The, my Amendment 65 would have the effect of removing uh, subsection 2. However, uh, within this uh, group is also Amendment 66, which uh, will remove the section to which these previous two amendments apply. Uh, and as a consequence of my expectation that the Minister's Amendment 66 will pass, uh, I've introduced Amendment 66A, which is designed simply to make the same change to the, uh, the new provision uh, as I was proposing for the old, and that is to remove may and replace it with must to, to ensure that the bill has the effect of requiring applicants for the register to provide a criminal record certificate. Hey, um, anyone else? Uh, Minister? Uh, convener, I'll speak to my amendment number 66 and respond to, to Alec Johnson's amendments. Amendment 66 is a technical amendment to modify section 31 of the bill so that it better reflects operational practice. It will not change the intended, the intended effect of section 31 and this aims to provide Scottish ministers with access to information on criminal records where they have reasonable grounds to suspect that the information already to, provided to them under section 30 brackets 2 of the bill is false or has become inaccurate. Alex Johnson's amendments 64 and 65 and amendment 66A are intended to have the same effect, but the latter amendment would change my proposed replacement of section 31 rather than the existing section 31. The amendments would mean Scottish ministers must have regard to information that would normally be contained in a criminal record certificate where they have reasonable grounds to suspect that the information under section 30 brackets 2 is or has become inaccurate. I don't think this change would create a proportionate process as it would mean that ministers would have to look at criminal record information in every case, even in cases where the information provided under section 30 2 did not relate to a criminal offence. Amendment 66, as currently worded, proposes that Scottish ministers may have regard to this information. It is important to retain this discretion to enable Scottish ministers to determine whether it is proportionate in the circumstances to have regard to what is highly sensitive information. Applicants will be, will be required to provide information on any criminal offences when they make um, their application, and it's where um, it's thought later that those um, that information um, was inaccurate or has changed. That's when we would look to having the, the, been able to may have discretion to determine to look at the full criminal record. And it's important that we keep that discretion to enable Scottish ministers to, to determine if it's proportionate in the circumstances, because it is highly sensitive information we'd be talking about. In conclusion, I would ask the committee to support my Amendment 66, but not to support Amendment 64, 65 or 66A, as they would create a dis disproportionate process. Can I ask you to wind up and press a withdrawal? Oh, Mary, you want to say? 
Thank you, Convener. Can I again ask um, if, if the Minister could perhaps clarify something for me in relation to her Amendment 66? Because Amendment 66 would leave out Section 31, and the last paragraph of Section 31 would require that um, if a, check has, a criminal record check has to be done, you have to wait till that check is back before proceeding. But your amendment would remove that, that, that section, and I'm just a bit concerned that that section is being removed. Um, and I wonder if you could perhaps explain to me why, why you've done that. It is a technical amendment about operational practices, about uh, ministers uh, are responsible for the, the disclosure uh, and the, the system for disclosing criminal records. Yeah. So ministers can get that information if necessary straight from disclosure as opposed to going through a kind of circuitous route to get it. So that's what we're saying. When someone applies, uh, they have to supply, crim they, they disclose criminal information. If we think that's not accurate, we can then obtain uh, criminal information direct from disclosure. Disclosure Scotland. So it's not, it is, this is actually strengthening it and just making it operationally more effective than previously. So, Alec, can I ask you to wind up and press or withdraw your amendment? <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, although it seems a bit strange, there is a strong likelihood that I will support Amendment 66 uh, in the name of the Minister. However, for chronological consistency, I will uh, press Amendment 64 at this stage. So, the question is that Amendment 64 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yeah. We're not agreed. We move to a vote. Those in favour of Amendment 64, please show. Those against, please show. The vote is yes, three, no, four, so the amendment is not agreed to. I call Amendment 65 in the name of Alec Johnson, already debated with Amendment 64. Alec, to move. Moved. It's not moved. I call Amendment 66 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 64. Minister, to move formally. Moved. I call Amendment 66A in the name of Alec Johnson, already debated with Amendment 64. Alec, to move or not move? The question is that Amendment 66A be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We're yes. not agreed. We move to a vote. Those in favour of Amendment 66A, please show. Three votes. Those against, please show. Four votes. The result is yes, three, no, four. The amendment is not agreed to. Uh, Minister to Presser, withdraw Amendment 66. Yes. The question is that Amendment 66 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. yes. We're not agreed. Those in favour of Amendment 66, please show. Those against, please show. The vote is yes, four, no, three. The amendment is agreed to. The question then is that section 631 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. I, we move to letting agent registration number. I call amendment 67 in the name of Alec Johnson in a group on its own. Alec, to move and speak to the amendment. Again, if you bear with me for a second. The, the effect of this amendment uh, makes it obligatory to include the letting agent's registration number uh, in all documentation. I hope I've got the right amendment there. Uh, yes, uh, there is uh, no practical reason why a letting agent's registration number cannot appear in all agent's documentation. The, require, the requir requirement should be obligatory. Anyone else? Minister? Um, I, I'll speak to Amendment 67. At present, the bill requires letting agents to take all reasonable steps to include the registration number and communications with landlords and tenants in adverts and other publications. This represents a stringent test for letting agents to adhere to. Failure to use the registration number contravenes the fit and proper person requirements and could lead to the person's registration being revoked. 
and this amendment seeks to remove the qualification, it would mean that any failure not to include the registration number in a document, advert or publication would then become part of the fit and proper person consideration. And this would include situations where, it, where for example, the number hadn't been included because of an IT failure or because of human error. I want to see a robust, effective regime in place. However, this seems uh, a bit draconian, and I consider that the, quali the qualification provides for a more equitable approach and should be left in place. And I invite Alex Johnson to withdraw his amendment. Alec, are you going to wind up and press or withdraw your amendment? I think the, uh, the, the brief discussion we've had, uh, I think my position and that of the Minister leaves a considerable gap. Uh, which uh, I, I still think needs to be addressed. For their, therefore, uh, I'm content to seek leave to withdraw this amendment at this stage, but I will reserve the right to bring back uh, something at stage three, uh, which seeks to fit into the gap which this discussion has quite obviously left open. Does anyone object to the amendment being withdrawn? No. Okay. The question then is that section 32 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The question is that section 33 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We move to duration of letting agent registration. I call amendment 135 in the name of Mary Fee, grouped with amendment 136. Mary, to move amendment 135 and speak to both amendments in the group, please. Thank you, um, convener. Amendments 135 and 136 would change the duration of registration from three years to one. And the result of my amendment would be that, that it would tighten up the sector. Um, and it also does sit with comments that were made by the Minister earlier this morning in relation to length of registration. We need to have a well-regulated private rented sector if those within the sector are to have confidence in it. Annual registration would ensure a well-run, well-managed and well-regulated sector and any breaches would be caught quickly and the potential for poor practice would be minimal, which would strengthen the sector and demonstrate good governance. And I move Amendment 135 in my name. Anyone else wish to speak on amendments 135 or 136? Okay, Minister. Okay. At present, the bill provides that a letting agent's period of registration be, should be for a three-year duration, um, and Mary Fee's amendments seek to reduce the registration period to one year. As it stands, Scottish ministers are able to consider a breach of the fit and proper person test or the code of practice at any time during the three-year period of registration. Section 35 provides Scottish ministers with the power to revoke a registration if the agent is no longer a fit and proper person. I consider the three-year registration cycle to be a proportionate approach which safeguards clients without placing an onerous burden on the industry. I therefore invite Mary Fee to withdraw Amendment 135 and not move Amendment 136. Mary, can I ask you to wind up and press or withdraw your amendment? Thank you, and I will be very, um, very brief, um, convener. I, I note the, the minister's comments, but I simply wish to reiterate what I said. We need a well-run, well-maintained, well-governed private rented sector if the people within it um, are to have confidence in that sector, and my amendment would ensure that would happen, so I move Amendment 135 in my name. So the question is that Amendment 135 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? We are not agreed. There will be a vote. Those in favour of Amendment 135, please show. Those against, please show. The vote is yes, three, no, four, so the amendment is not agreed to. Call Amendment 136 in the name of Mary Fee, already debated with Amendment 135. Mary, to move or not move? Move. The question is that Amendment 136 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Mm -hmm. We are not agreed. There will be a vote. Those in favour of Amendment 136, please show. Those against, please show. The result is yes, three, no, four. The amendment is therefore not agreed to. The question then is that Section 34 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yeah. That is agreed. Uh, move to register of letting agents minor and technical amendments. I call Amendment 68 in the name of the Minister, grouped with Amendments 70, 86, 88 and 89. 
Minister, can I ask you to move Amendment 68 and speak to all amendments in the group, please? Okay. Amendments uh, 68 and 70 are technical amendments to maintain consistency of terminology in Section 35 of the Bill. And Amendments 86, 88 and 89 ensure that certain key definitions apply throughout Part 4 of the Bill. And accordingly, I move Amendment 68. The question then is the Amendment 68 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. I call Amendment 69 in the name of the Minister are already debated with Amendment 60. Minister to move formally. Moved. The question is that Amendment 69 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 70 in the name of the Minister already debated with Amendment 68. Minister to move formally. Moved. The question is that Amendment 70 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. I call Amendment 71 in the name of Alec Johnson, already debated with Amendment 61. Alec, to move or not move? Moved. The question is that Amendment 71 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. The question is that Section 35 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. Move to register of letting agents, cancellation of registration on request. I call Amendment 72 in the name of Alec Johnson in a group on its own. Alec, to move and speak to your amendment. Thank you, Convener. Uh, the Bill lacks provision for the voluntary removal from the register of letting agents. A person may wish to be removed from the register for a number of reasons, including change of career, retirement or sale of the business. This amendment provides that Scottish ministers can remove a person from the register at their request if they are satisfied that the letting agent has made adequate arrangements with respect to the business in hand and that it is otherwise appropriate to do so. Anyone else? Minister? Uh, amendment 72 provides a mechanism for a letting agent to apply to Scottish ministers to terminate a registration. Otherwise, an agent's registration will lapse after three years if no application to renew is made. The amendment requires Scottish ministers to grant this if they are satisfied that the agent has made adequate arrangements for their letting agency work. I am sympathetic to the aim of this amendment. However, it is important to get it right in light of the significant consequences of not being registered and to ensure the robustness of the register. I would like to take time to consider the technical points here and come back at stage three with an amendment that I, addressing the issue that I am confident will work. And I hope that uh, Alec Johnson will take that as sufficient undertaking to withdraw Amendment 72 today. I would like to wind up and press or withdraw your amendment. Uh, thank you, Convener. Uh, I, um, I hear what the Minister has said uh, and I am therefore uh, confident that if I seek leave to withdraw, that the Minister will bring forward uh, an alternative proposal uh, or an equivalent proposal at stage three. I therefore seek leave to withdraw. Does anyone object to this amendment being withdrawn? No. The question then is that sections 36 and 37 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. We move to letting agency work without registration. I call amendment 73 in the name of Alec Johnson grouped with amendments 74 and 75. Alec, can I ask you to move amendment 73 and speak to all amendments in the group? <coughs> I move amendment 73 in my name. Uh, this amendment voids uh, all contracts for letting agency concluded between a landlord and a letting agent where a letting agent is refused access or uh, to or removed from the register. The bill prevents a proposed or former letting agent from recovering costs or charges incurred in respect of letting agency work carried out after a person has been refused registration or has been removed from the register. These penalties do not affect the existence of a contract or letting agency work. This amendment will impose a real sanction on the the proposed or former letting agent by reducing the contract by making it void. No contractual claims can then be made. Um, Minister. I understand uh, the wish to deter unre unregistered letting agents from continuing to operate after the date of their deregistration, but I have some concerns with this amendment. 
Firstly, while it might seem appropriate to make contracts void on the basis that the person should not be carrying out letting agency work, this could have unintended adverse consequences for third parties. For example, where a letting agent has entered into a contract with a landlord after the relevant date to provide letting agency services. If a letting agent then con contracts a third party to undertake maintenance or cleaning of the property, then this could have adverse consequences on the third party's contract and may affect the recouping of legitimate costs for the work. I can reassure the committee that there are already provisions for dealing with unregistered letting agents who continue to operate. Section 39 makes it a criminal offence to do so. Amendment 75 in my name seeks to increase the level of the fine from level 5 on the standard scale to a maximum of £50,000. Additional amendments in my name will seek to set up a monitoring system with powers for Scottish ministers to inspect and require information from persons appearing to operate as a letting agent. These will help to identify unregistered letter letting agents, and therefore it is not clear what Amendment 73 would, would usefully add. Therefore, I would invite Alex Johnson to withdraw his amendment. And turning to my amendments in this group, Amendment 74 relates to Section 38 in the Bill. This section provides that letting agents are not able to recover costs where they have been refused entry to or removed from the register. The amendment makes clear that costs incurred by a letting agent before they are removed from the register are still recoverable. This will allow letting agents such as those who let their registration lapse for a legitimate reason, such as retiring from the industry, to recover costs that may still be owed to them. Amendment 75 seeks to increase the level of fine for the offence of operating as a letting agent without registration to a maximum of £50,000. This amendment will provide a significant deterrent to anyone operating as a letting agent without being registered. So, Alex, can I ask you to wind up and press or withdraw your amendment? The, I think at this stage I will take the opportunity to press my amendment but look forward to seeing what the Minister has to say on this subject uh, at stage three. I will press. Press. OK, so the question is that Amendment 73 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. We are not agreed. There will be a vote. Those in favour of Amendment 73, please show. Those against, please show. The vote is yes, one, no, six, so the amendment is not agreed to. I call Amendment 74 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 73, Minister, to move formally. The question is that Amendment 74 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. The question is that Section 38 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. OK, that is agreed. I call Amendment 75 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 73. Minister, to move formally. The question is that Amendment 75 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. The question is that Section 39 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. The question is that Section 40 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. We move to Letting Agent Code of Practice, and I call Amendment 76 in the name of Alec Johnson, grouped with Amendment 77, 137 to 144, 130, 126 and 127. Alec, can I ask you to move Amendment 76 and speak to all amendments in the group, please? I will move my Amendment uh, 76 and I will uh, briefly speak to that amendment alone. Uh, this amendment uh, has the effect of replacing a may with a must. The amendment, uh, the sec section 41 gives Scottish ministers a discretion as to whether they will issue a code of practice about letting agents. The code is key to the scheme of regulation under the bill and therefore ministers should not have an option not to issue the code. This amendment therefore amends section 41 by removing from the Scottish Ministers the discretion to issue a code of practice. Okay. Minister, can I ask you to speak to amendment 77 and the other amendments in the group, please? Respond to amendment uh, 66. Um, the bill currently uh, provides that Scottish Ministers may by regulations set out a code of practice for letting agents. 
this amendment would place a duty on Scottish ministers to do so. My amendment 126 will require the first code of practice and replacement codes to be subject to the affirmative procedure in the Scottish Parliament. If my amendment is accepted, the Scottish Parliament will require to approve the regulations setting out the first and any future replacement code before they can be made. As Scottish ministers will not be able to make these regulations without parliamentary, parliamentary approval, putting this duty on ministers would preempt Parliament's ability to agree or not to agree to the code. Therefore, it would be not appropriate to do so. And on that basis, I invite Alec Johnson to withdraw his amendment. As introduced, the Bill provides for Scottish Ministers to develop a code of practice on professional standards in consultation with stakeholders. And at Stage 1, Parliament called for further detail of what to, is to be included in the code of practice and put in the face of the Bill. Amendment 77 responds to this request and ensures that important matters of client money protection and professional indemnity arrangements will be included in the Code. As introduced, the Bill provides that the Code of Practice will be subject to the negative procedure. The Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee expressed concerns about this. It considered that the affirmative procedure would be a more suitable level of parliamentary scrutiny given the significant legal consequences of failure to comply with the Code. I have reconsidered that and as I, as I have indicated, Amendment 126 applies affirmative procedure to the first code and any replacement code. Any adjustment to the codes to, will be subject to negative procedure, and I believe this is a balanced approach. Amendment 77 is therefore intended to reassure Parliament by providing more detail on the face of the Bill of what the code will cover. And Amendment 126 will also allow for an increased level of parliamentary scrutiny of the first and any future code. Patrick Harvey's Amendment 127 also aims to ensure that the code of practice for letting agents will be subject to the affirmative procedure. This would mean that any change to the code, no matter how minor, would be subject to affirmative procedure in the Parliament. My Amendment 126 provides for the first code and any full revision of the code to be subject to affirmative procedure, and I would invite Patrick Harvey not to move his amendment in favour of the more balanced approach. I would now address Patrick Harvey's Amendment 130. I share his wish to see progress being made to develop the Code of Practice, but I want to ensure that the Code is drafted with proper consideration of its aims, the desired outcomes and how it will be enforced. There is no question of any delay on my part in implementing the Code. It is, however, important to allow sufficient time to enable the Scottish Government to consult fully with the industry and with the public. And furthermore, the Code can't be finalised until the Association Tribunal's legislation has been commenced. The Tri Tribunal's Act was recently enacted by Parliament. Tribunal reform is now progressing and the first tier tribunal is expected to be up and running by 2016. Therefore, I wish to reassure Mr Harvey as to my commitment to progressing the development of the Code, which I would expect to be laid before Parliament within 18 months of the Bill's enactment. So I ask him to draw his amendment, as it does not allow sufficient time for the practicalities of full public consultation. I will now address Amendments 137, 138, 139 and 143. Again, I have given consider careful consideration to these amendments because, like Mr Harvey, I also um, have heard of the many and varied practices of some letting agents and the adverse effects these can have on tenants, and that's why we're proposing the regulation of the letting agent industry. However, <coughs> matters of rent deposits, matters of providing documentation and compliance with the repairing standard are the legal requirement of the landlord. There are a number of legal requirements already in relation to these matters. For example, the tenancy deposit scheme set, it sets out what the legal obligations of a landlord are if they choose to take a deposit. Letting agents need to comply with the law when managing a property and acting on behalf of a landlord. That's why it's important that the Code of Practice will set out the standards that both tenants and landlords should expect and that letting agents can demonstrate they have the necessary training for registration. I want to be clear that I want this regime to be effective. I'm willing to consider what people have to say on important issues covered by these amendments and their views on what should be included in the Code of Practice. But I think 
the right time to do this will be when consulting on the draft code. The code will be subject to public consultation and because it's to be affirmative procedure, the committee will have the opportunity to consider the detail of the code once drafted. I therefore cannot support amendments 137, 138, 139 and 143. Convener, I'll now address Amendment 140, 141 and 142. And I sympathise with people who are struggling to find affordable rented property while in receipt of state benef benefits and those whose immigration status is uncertain. However, there is a number of practical difficulties with these amendments. It's ultimately, ultimately the landlord's decision who to let their property to, not the letting agents, although, lo although the letting agent may provide advice and support to the landlord. And I'm not clear how Amendment 140 could actually be enforced, because most landlords would want to check that the tenant can afford the rent. And for Amendment 141, I want to be absolutely clear that I disapprove of the use of the term no DSS. The issue of discrimination and the matters that Patrick Harvey raises uh, in his amendments is something that the Scottish Government will take up with the letting agents to industry through the process of developing the Code of Practice. The Scottish Government will encourage equal opportunities throughout the industry uh, in addressing the, the matters that Patrick Harvey raises. And I therefore can't support uh, amendments 140, 141 and 142. Turning to Mary Fee's Amendment 144, um, it proposes a specific reference to the need of a letting agent to comply with the letting agent code of practice. However, the bill already provides for compliance with the code of practice to be a key aspect of the fit and proper person test for registration. The code will be enforced by application to a tribunal and decisions found against a letting, agents, a letting agency will be reported back to Scottish ministers. And like Mary Fee, and as I've already uh, alluded to, like Patrick Harvey, I've also heard and know of the many and varied practices of some letting agents trying to avoid protecting tenancy deposits with one of the three approved schemes. The tenancy deposit scheme has its own enforcement requirements, so paragraph A is unnecessary. And unintentionally, this provision could also be problematic if a landlord wants to receive the deposit from the letting agent so that the landlord can put it into a scheme which is permitted. With regards to paragraph B, I'm well aware of letting agents of, who have charged premiums and the effect these charges can have on tenants, and that's why we've already clarified the legislation to make it crystal clear what is allowed. Turning now to paragraph C and D of Amendment 144, I sympathise, as I've said, with people who are struggling to find affordable rented property while in receipt of state benefits, especially families. All Scottish Government policies ref reflect Scottish values of fairness and opportunities and promotes equality and social cohesion. And as I said in my response to Patrick Harvey's earlier amendments 140 to 142, the Scottish Government will discuss equality issues with the letting agency, agency, agency industry through the process of de developing the code of practice, and this will be something that we, we, we take seriously. We do as a government encourage it, and it will be part of the code of practice. So I would invite Mary Fee not to move her amendment. Can I ask Patrick Harvey to speak to Amendment 137 and the other amendments in the group, please? Thank you, Convener. And, uh, can I begin by uh, acknowledging the extensive uh, treatment of the amendments in this group by the Minister? Uh, if I could start with the, if I could say, procedural aspects. First of all, um, Alex Johnson seeking a, a requirement uh, that uh, ministers make uh, regulations setting out the code and the Minister's objection that that's not compatible uh, with the affirmative procedure. Uh, I can understand the argument that's been put there, uh, but I'd, I would suggest that, uh, at the very least, a requirement that the code uh, be, that regulation setting out the code be laid before Parliament within a clearly defined period. Uh, I would hope that the government is comfortable with that to some extent. It, it's, uh, it's been said by the minister that uh, 18 months might be a uh, a reasonable expectation. I would have no objection to laying an amendment at stage three uh, that um, sets out more or less what my amendment 130 does, uh, but 
uh, giving 18 months instead of a year after royal assent. And so when it comes to that uh, Amendment 130, uh, I won't move that. Uh, and the uh, Amendment 127 um, also won't be necessary, given the Minister's decision to apply the affirmative procedure for the first code and full revisions to it. The other amendments from me in this group do seek to explore what the code will in fact cover. And I think it's, it's been clear during the, the course of the committee's discussions that the content of the code is uh, really going to be crucial to whether any of this bill has the effect that, uh, that is being sought. Um, there are several, as the Minister says, of, of my amendments in this group which address matters which are legal requirements or where some legal requirements exist. And my intention in, in lodging amendments that engage with those issues is simply to explore and to confirm whether the code of practice itself will be a relevant instrument where a letting agent has not complied with a legal requirement. Um, for example, we, we know of several workarounds, including some legal workarounds, uh, for landlords to, to avoid complying with the intention of the deposit protection scheme. Uh, I want to ensure that where tenants find themselves in that situation at the mercy of, of the kind of letting agents that I think most responsible agents would do want to see changed or challenged, uh, I want to see tenants in that situation know that they can use the code of practice as their means of redress. Um, and so the, the, the amendments on rent levels, on uh, deposits and on the provision of information, uh, I think would help to ensure clarity that the code of practice will be relevant in those circumstances. Uh, repairs, again, are, I'm sure all members will acknowledge, are, are one of the uh, complaints that people may start off making and eventually stop complaining because they just figure out they've got to put up with basic repairs not being done. Uh, now, that applies to landlords as well as letting agents, but we have a, a bill that allows us to, to put requirements on letting agents, so uh, let's make a start there, I would suggest, and give a, a clear time limit within which uh, repairs need to be done. The three amendments relating to discrimination, 140, 141 and 142, um, I think it's regrettable that the Minister focuses on the use of the term no DSS. I hope that we would all like to see an end to the use of the term, but more important than the use of the term is the practice itself. Uh, if people stop using the term but continue the practice of discriminating against benefit recipients, uh, we won't really be much further forward. Um, and I do hope that the, the Minister can give some kind of indication that these matters will be addressed in the code when it is laid before Parliament. Um, it, uh, it does seem to me that discriminating against people purely because they receive benefits, not because they can't actually afford the service they're seeking to buy, uh, is, is completely unreasonable uh, and uh, destructive to the, the social cohesion that I think the, the government has a, a commitment to. Finally, I want to say something about the, uh, the amendment on discrimination on grounds of immigration status. And I, I would encourage the Minister, if, if the Minister has a further chance to, to respond, uh, I know that's at your discretion, convener. Uh, I would encourage the Minister to uh, say something more specific about this one, because we've, members will be aware of the statement of concern about the impact of the immigration bill on housing as well as health matters, on devolved matters, which the UK government has passed immigration legislation which impacts uh, on, uh, in this case, uh, landlords to check immigration status. Now, a, a range of organisations, including the uh, Scottish Association of Landlords, Shelter, uh, a, a wide range of other organisations and individuals have set out their serious concerns about this. Not only that's, that it's inappropriate in principle for that requirement to be placed uh, onto the private rented sector, but the potential for uh, increasing discrimination and, and inequality in our society uh, through this measure, uh, particularly uh, potential disadvantage for prospective legitimate tenants but whose status is unclear uh, or those not able to produce the required documents quickly uh, and people who are members of visible minority 
communities who are seeking accommodation. Uh, they said that rather than targeting the so-called illegal migrants, the tenant checking scheme may drive both those with irregular status and prospective legitimate tenants with unclear status and documents to unscrupulous landlords, boosting the rogue market. That's the very opposite uh, of what this bill is intended to achieve, uh, and it may be the consequence of the UK government's legislation uh, which clearly impacts on the devolved policy area of housing. And so if the Minister could be encouraged to respond, uh, not only to my amendment, but to the concerns that have been set out by this wide range of organisations uh, working in the private rented sector in Scotland, I think that would be very helpful. Can I ask you to, move, to speak to Amendment 144 and the other amendments in the group, please? Thank you, um, Convener. Amendment 144 in my name relates to the Code of Practice and working with Citizens Advice <laughs> Scotland, the amendment clarifies some of the issues that I have previously acknowledged around placing a duty that any person carrying out letting agency work must comply with the letting agent Code of Practice. The amendment would also ensure that anyone acting as a letting agent must comply with the Tenancy Deposit Scheme Scotland Regulations of 2011 and Section 120 of the 2006 Act. And point D of my amendment would prohibit letting agents from discriminating against anyone receiving state benefits under the acts listed or responsible for a child. And Citizens Advice Scotland have briefed that they have cases where potential tenants are discriminated against because they have children or are in receipt of housing benefit. And I listened with interest to the Minister's comments um, earlier. However, I, I do believe that, that my amendment would strengthen the legislation as it's drafted and would ensure that the code of practice is clear and unambiguous. And more importantly, it would ensure compliance. And I move Amendment 144. Anyone else wish to speak, James? Okay. Yeah, thank you, Convener. Um, there's been much discussion about the Code of Practice uh, through the consideration of this bill in Parliament and on the Committee. Uh, and I think uh, what many feel is that it's important that the Code of Practice uh, is actually meaningful and you know, has teeth if it's to be effective. Yeah, from that point of view, uh, Mary Fee's Amendment 144 uh, establishing absolute compliance with the code of practice, uh, you know, brings that into force. And also Patrick Harvey's amendments, uh, 137, 138, 139 uh, and 143, uh, deal with some of the practical issues that we've discussed in terms of consideration of this bill and give, you know, some specific requirements, for example, on advanced rents, the, the level of deposits, um, the, the requirement to provide a, a tenant with a standard tenancy and also on repairs. These would actually make a difference and, and would be meaningful. Uh, and similarly, Patrick Harvey, Harvey's amendments 140, 141 and 142 uh, in terms of you know discrimination uh, lay out something specific uh, and ensure that people in, uh, in the terms laid out in these amendments you know wouldn't be discriminated against. Um, you know, the, the Minister has acknowledged, you know, some sympathy with a lot of the issues raised in these amendments. Mm -hmm. However, uh, if we're actually to give, you know, meaning to make a difference in these areas, then I think the Code of Practice, you know, does have to be more specific. And these amendments, you know, look to address uh, some of the practicalities and, and would, would make a real difference. Minister, do you want to comment on any of these? I'll make a, a couple of uh, comments in response to, to some of the issues that, that, that Patrick Harvey raises. That most of the issues that he has raised, I, I would certainly anticipate, will be part of the Code of Practice, which will go through the affirmative pre procedure at Parliament and give stakeholders, the public and the committee, the opportunity to um, have their views heard on this as well. On the matter of immigration, as the committee is aware, immigration is a reserved matter, but the Scottish Government does not agree with the UK Government's position on um, landlords checking the immigration status of uh, tenants, and we've made that very clear uh, to the UK Government. What I would say is that when, when the code is being um, developed and, and consulted on, 
all of these matters will be taken into account, as will our position. We've made a position very clear with the UK government on this, and certainly um, it, we agree that it should not be... We can't break the law, but we're clear on our position. We've made it clear to the UK government that we don't think landlords should have to, to, to do that, and, and we'll proceed with that argument with the UK government, and we would also anticipate the code um, of practice will cover areas of discrimination, areas of uh, equality legislation and, and um, the other issues that he raises. In terms of Mary Fee's point, um, what I'm saying is that we already have provision that if someone breaches the code, that then they, they can lose their registration or they can be fined considerable sums of money. That is already there uh, in the bill and therefore um, I don't think what's been proposed adds anything to that. But I think that the Code of Guidance, I agree with James Keller, the Code of Guidance will be, the, the Code of Practice will be the important document of what we want to see in it, but it is right and proper that we consult properly in that code. I, th I took on board that we would take it through affirmative procedure for this code and any subsequent replacement code, and I think that, you know, that, that's something that we've recognised. So. Okay, uh, so, Alec, can I ask you to wind up and press or withdraw your amendment. Uh, thank you very much, convener. Uh, it seems like a few minutes ago now, but I listened with some interest uh, to the uh, Minister's response uh, to my amendment 76, I think it was. Uh, and I accept that where there is a procedural issue, uh, that it would be appropriate for me to uh, seek leave to withdraw at this stage with a view to coming back and having another crack at it at stage three. Seek so, leave to withdraw. Okay. Does anyone object to the amendment being withdrawn? No. Okay. Um, call Amendment 77 in the name of the Minister. Already debated with Amendment 76. Minister, to move formally. Moved. The question is that Amendment 77 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. yes. That is agreed. Uh, I call Amendment 137 in the name of Patrick Harvey. Already debated with Amendment 76. Patrick, to move or not move? The question is that Amendment 137 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. We're not agreed. There will be a division. Those in favour of Amendment 137, please show. Those against, please show. The, um, the result is yes, two, no, five. The amendment is therefore not agreed to. I call Amendment 138 in the name of Patrick Harvey, already debated with Amendment 76. Patrick, to move or not move? Convener, would it be appropriate to suggest moving these up to 143 on block? I suspect the result will be the same for all of them. Um, Does anyone object to those uh, amendments being moved on block? Okay, so um, the question is that amendments 138 to 143 mm -hmm. be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. No. We're not agreed. So we have to go in, in, individually. Yeah. So the question is that amendment 138 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We're not agreed. Those in favour of Amendment 138, please show. Those against, please show. So the, uh, the vote is yes, two, no, five. The amendment is not agreed to. Um, call Amendment 139 in the name of Patrick Harvey. Already debated with Amendment 76. Patrick, to move or not move? The question is that Amendment 139 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yeah. We're not agreed. We move to division. Those in favour of Amendment 139, please show. Two. Those against, please show. Five. The vote is yes, two, no, five. The amendment is not agreed to. Um, I call Amendment 140 in the name of Patrick Harvey, already debated with Amendment 76. Moved. Qu <laughs> question is that Amendment 140 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yeah. We're not agreed. Yeah. We move to a vote. Those in favour of Amendment 140, please show. Those against, please show. 
The result of the division is yes, two, no, five. The amendment is not agreed to. I call amendment 141 in the name of Patrick Harvey, already debated with moved. amendment 76. Patrick, moved. to move or not move, it's moved. The question is amendment 141 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We're not agreed. We move to a division. Those in favour of amendment 141, please show. Those against, please show. The division is yes, two, no, five. It's not, the amendment is not agreed to. I call Amendment 142 in the name of Patrick Carvey, already debated with Amendment 76. Moved. Patrick has moved. The question is that Amendment 142 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Mm. We're not agreed. We move to a division. Those in favour of Amendment 142, please show. Those against, please show. The result is yes, two, no, five. The amendment is not agreed to. I call Amendment 143 in the name of Patrick Harvey, already debated with Amendment 76. Patrick, to move or not move? Never know your luck. Moved. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, that Amendment 143 be agreed to? Are we all agreed? No. We're not agreed. We move to another division. Those in favour of Amendment 143, please show. Those against, please show. <clears throat> so the division is yes, two, no, five. Sorry, but... Call that again. The, the, no, did I miss the vote? <laughs> <laughs> call, call that division again. Those in favour of Amendment 143, please show. Those, those against, please show. Vote is yes, two, no, five. That amendment is not agreed to. Call Amendment 144 in the name of Mary Fee, already debated with Amendment 76. Mary, to move or not move? Move. The question is that Amendment 144 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. We're not agreed. We move to a division. Those in favour of Amendment 144, please show. Those against, please show. The result of the division is yes, two, no, five. The amendment is therefore not agreed to. Um, I call Amendment 130 in the name of Patrick Harvey. Already debated with Amendment 76. Patrick, to move or not move? Not move. Okay, the question then is that section 41 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. The question is that section 42 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Okay. So uh, I think we'll take a couple more uh, sections before we uh, have a, a break. So I call, uh, we move to enforcement of code of practice. Call amendment 131 in the name of Patrick Harvey, <coughs> grouped with amendments 78, 132, 79, 133, and 145. Patrick, can I ask you to move Amendment 131 and speak to all the amendments in the group, please? Thank you, Convener. Um, the, uh, the amendments in my name in this group are, are somewhat simpler than the last. You'll be glad to know. There are two basic objectives that I'm proposing here. One uh, is captured in, in both Amendment 131 and 132, which is to ensure that a, a tenant uh, who wishes to apply to the first tier tribunal uh, for a determination that their letting agent has failed to comply with the code of practice can authorise someone to do that on their behalf. Uh, it doesn't specify who that might be, uh, but obviously we could envisage a range of voluntary organisations or uh, support services uh, might wish to take on that role. There are clearly going to be tenants who uh, will be assertive enough and clear in their own mind enough that they want to uh, raise a complaint about their letting agent uh, failing to comply with the code. There will be others who, frankly, don't feel confident enough uh, or feel that they, they need a bit of help uh, to do so. Uh, and it seems fairly reasonable that that initial application might be made uh, by somebody on their behalf who can work with them. So I, I hope that the government will be willing to accept that. Amendment 133. Uh, is perhaps a, a little more substantial. Uh, it suggests that when a letting agent has been found in breach of the code uh, and in fact has um, uh, an enforcement order against them, uh, that until that enforcement order is complied with, uh, the tenant won't be due to pay any rent for that period. Uh, now, it may be that the, um, the government might be sympathetic to the intention but would like to imply that in different circumstances or limit the application. Uh, but I do hope that the government can argue, can, can acknowledge the argument uh, that at least where there's a serious breach of the code uh, and where an enforcement order has been made uh, for the time uh, between that enforcement order 
and the order being complied with, uh, the, the letting agent should not be under any expectation that they can charge rent for that period uh, from a tenant who's not having the, the service delivered on the standard that we're all hoping to set out. Uh, so I move Amendment 131 and hope that the Minister will respond positively to both of these suggestions. Can I ask the Minister to speak to Amendment 78 and the other amendments in the group, please? Okay. Uh, I'll first respond to, to Patrick Harvey's amendments uh, 131 and 132. The Bill already provides for a tenant or landlord to apply for the, to the first tier tribunal for a determination that a letting agent has failed to comply with the Code of Practice. And I know that there will be cases where a tenant needs support to make an application to the tribunal. Amendments there to 131 and 132 propose that tenants should be able to authorise third parties for them in this regard. However, I don't believe that putting this provision in the bill is necessary. The arrangement for representation would be a matter for the tribunal's rules in due course. I, I think I made it very clear at the previous session that there'd be an expectation that people could uh, be accompanied at a tribunal. There is nothing in the bill as it currently stands to prevent a tenant seeking support from a third party in assisting them with progressing their complaint. I would therefore ask Patrick Harvey to withdraw amendments 131 and not move amendment 132. I will speak to amendments 78 and 79, which are in my name. And these amendments seek to expand the provision at section 43 to allow Scottish ministers to make an application to the first tier tribunal. This will strengthen the enforcement provisions in the Bill by enabling Scottish ministers to act on information obtained either through their own compliance checks or from information from third parties, including tenants. I have some concerns about Patrick Harvey's Amendment 133, and it's the stopping of rent until the letting agent complies with the enforcement order could primarily penalise the landlord rather than the agent. I, I absolutely accept where um, Patrick Harvey, what, what his intention was in this, but it's about the letting agent here in the code of practice we're, we're dealing with. If the applicant is a tenant and they're suffering loss or have suffered a loss as a result of the letting agent's failure to comply with the code of practice, then the tribunal could make an order under section 438B of the bill to provide compensation to the tenant. There are other enforcement measures which Scottish ministers can take if a letting agent doesn't comply with an enforcement order which would have greater impact on the letting agent than the stopping of rent payments. The tribunal is able to inform Scottish ministers of the failure to comply which could result in a letting agent's registration being revoked. In addition, it is an offence to fail to comply with an enforcement order and this could result in a fine or conviction. On the basis that the other pen penalties exist in the bill which rightly target the letting agent rather than the landlord, I invite Patrick Harvey not to move Amendment 133. I now speak to Amendment number 145. In the context of the fit and proper person test, Scottish ministers currently have discretion over whether they wish to take into account a contra contravention of an enforcement order, but they are not required to do so. However, Amendment 145 seeks to compel Scottish ministers to deregister a letting agent who commits an offence by not complying with an enforcement order. Any letting agent that fails to comply with an enforcement order without reasonable excuse commits an offence under Section 46 of the Bill. Scottish ministers will also be able to deregister a letting agent in these circumstances. We will take a robust line with letting agents through these regulations to promote compliance. But ministers should retain discretion in the matter in order to ensure proportionate response depending on the circumstances of each case. Amendment 145 goes on to require Scottish ministers to note the deregistration in the register. Thereafter, Scottish ministers must make provision for the consequences of that deregistration for tenants of, for, for tenants of properties managed by the agent. However, it is more appropriate for the landlord to make those arrangements, not Scottish ministers. And I appreciate that Mary Fee wants to ensure a robust consequence for failing to comply with an enforcement order, but the bill already provides for a, ro a robust approach, and I would therefore ask Mary Fee not to move her amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Speak to her amendment 145 and the other amendments in the group, please. Convener, <coughs> and, I, and I will, you'll be glad to hear, be quite brief in moving my amendment um, 145. 
Um, the amendment would provide um, extra prote protection for potential victims of rogue landlords who may be acting outside of the code, and anyone found to be acting in such a manner must be removed from the register by Scottish ministers, and that must be noted on the register. And the amendment would also allow for ministers to make provision for tenants in properties where an agent has been removed from the register, because it is unclear at present what the circumstances would be if, if that was, was, was to happen. And I, I listened to um, the comments that the minister made in relation to um, enforcement, but I come back to a point that I made earlier. We need to make this sector as strong as possible. The, the rules surrounding regulation have to be clear and unambiguous, and my amendment would strengthen the legislation um, as drafted. I am supportive of the other amendments in the group, and I move Amendment 145 in my name. Minister, do you wish to comment on that? Okay. Um, Patrick Harvey, would you like to wind up and press or withdraw your amendment, please? <coughs> Thank you. Um, on Amendment 133, around the stopping of rent, um, I understand the Minister's concern that, uh, that effectively what looks like a penalty could be passed on to the the landlord rather than borne by the letting agent. But it does seem to me that that's a matter between the landlord and the letting agent. And that if, a, if a, the, the agreement between a landlord and a letting agent specifies that the letting agent uh, will pay the landlord uh, for every month that they're managing the property, uh, then you know, the, the stopping of rent would fall to the letting agent, not to the landlord. Uh, I think the priority surely should be to ensure that tenants who are not being given the service that they have a right to expect shouldn't have to pay for it during that period. However, I'm, I'm content to not move it on the basis that I'll revise uh, the amendment and return to the chamber at stage three with that in a way that tries to take account of the concerns that the minister expressed. On amendments 131 and 132, I was a wee bit disappointed that this relatively small change wasn't accepted by the government. And I, I think the Enabling tenants to authorise someone else to make an application to the tribunal on their behalf does go further than simply allowing somebody to be accompanied in that process or supported in that process. Uh, there'll be, there will be people who simply, uh, for whatever reason, find it beyond their, uh, their, their level of confidence to make that application at all but that somebody else would be able to do it for them. There'd be other circumstances, for example, where uh, I'd be thinking of uh, situations that I've been aware of personally in Glasgow around uh, student accommodation, where a number of students uh, are being treated badly by the same letting agent in the sim similar circumstances, but many of them may be moving on shortly and simply don't think it's worth their while or the hassle or the time uh, of making any kind of formal complaint uh, about that. Whereas if these amendments were passed, a third party, such as their, their student welfare rights service, could make an application collectively on behalf of all of them. Uh, and that would not only give the, uh, the application greater weight uh, with the tribunal, uh, but would also ensure that the treatment of all tenants in that circumstance were addressed uh, in, in the application, rather than simply a small minority who might be willing to, to raise the matter themselves. So. Um, in short, convener, uh, when it comes to Amendment 133, I won't move that, but we'll seek to return to it at Stage 3. For the moment, I press Amendment 131. Okay, so the question is that Amendment 131 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. We're not agreed. We move to vote. Those in favour of Amendment 131, please show. Those against, please show. The result of the vote is yes, two, no, five. The amendment is therefore not agreed to. Call Amendment 78 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 131. Minister, to move formally. Moved. The question is that Amendment 78 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. The call Amendment 132 in the name of Patrick Harvey, already debated with Amendment 131. Pat moved. It's not moved. Uh, I call Amendment 79 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 131. Minister, to move formally. Moved. The question is that Amendment 79 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 133 in the name of Patrick Harvey, already debated with Amendment 131. Patrick, to move or not move? 
The question then is that section 43 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that sections 44 and 45 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Call amendment 145 in the name of Mary Fee, already debated with amendment 131. Mary, to move or not move? move. The question is that amendment 145 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are not agreed. We move to vote. Those in favour of amendment 145, please show. Those against, please show. The result of the vote is yes to no five. The amendment is therefore not agreed. The question is that section 46 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. I call amendment 80 in the name of the minister. Already debated with amendment 63. Minister to move formally. Mm -hmm. The question is that amendment 80 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. Call Amendment 81 in the name of the Minister. Already debated with Amendment 63. Minister to move formally. Moved. The question is that Amendment 81 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 82 in the name of the Minister. Already debated with Amendment 63. Minister to move formally. Moved. The question is that Amendment 82 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. I call Amendment 83 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 63. Minister to move formally. Yes. question is that Amendment 83 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. <coughs> I call Amendment 84 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 63. Minister to move formally. Moved. The question is that Amendment 84 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. The question then is that sections 47 to 50 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. We move to the meaning of letting agency work. I call amendment 85 in the name of Alex Johnson, grouped with amendments 87 and 128. Alec, to move amendment 85 and speak to the amendments in the group. Thank you. Um, I move amendment 85. Sometimes when you're reading through a bill, when you're putting the sections together and reading them in the, the appropriate order, something leaps out at you that just doesn't seem right. Uh, and my Amendment 85 uh, is inspired by that experience. The function of the amendment would be to leave out uh, Section 51, Paragraph 1b. Section 51 provides the definition of letting agency work. Section 51 1A is clear when it describes letting agency work as things done in the course of a person's business in response to relevant instructions so that a landlord can enter into a lease or occup occupancy agreement. However, Section 51 1B is more problematic because it includes in, a letting, in letting agency work activities such as repairing, maintaining, improving, ensuring or otherwise managing a house which is subject to a lease. Now, such a range of activity is not really letting agency work and would bring many people into regulate, the regulatory net who should not be included, such as roofers, painters, decorators, builders, insurance companies, house factors and possibly many others. Accordingly, uh, I propose that we remove that uh, paragraph uh, 1b from section 51 uh, to clarify that. And I look forward to hearing how the Minister interprets it. Okay, Minister, can I ask you to speak to Amendment 87 and the other amendments in the group, please? Okay. <coughs> convener. Amendment 87 adjusts the existing power in section 51.3 to change the meaning of letting, letting agency work through secondary legislation. It makes clear that the Scottish ministers can specify that work carried out that work carried out by certain bodies or work under certain types of schemes is to be excluded from the regulatory regime. The power to exempt schemes is limited to schemes which are for the purpose of helping people secure tenancies in the private rented sector and which are operated by a body on a not-for-profit basis. Such schemes may include rent deposit guarantee schemes, which carry out activities such as facilitating lettings, which is letting agency work within the meaning of Part 4. And these schemes are not intended to be brought under the letting agency regulatory regime. And so this power, this power to exempt is needed. The power to specify bodies is intended to allow Scottish ministers the option of excluding organisations such as not-for-profit bodies 
whose letting agency work includes activities other than those re relating to rent deposit schemes. And these powers are required to allow ministers to respond flexibly to any future changes in the letting agent sector, and Amendment 128 will, be able, will enable provision of this kind to be made in an order subject to the negative procedure. An order that otherwise modifies the meaning of letting agency work will continue to be subject to the affirmative pr procedure as before. I'll turn now to, to Alex Johnson's Amendment number 35. I'm aware that at, this, at stage one, the Law Society raised some concerns about the definition of letting agency work in section 51. I've looked at those concerns and I'm satisfied that the definition captures all of the activity that should be regulated. The, the key factor, Alex Johnson talked about roofers and slaters and, and, and various workmen, but the key factor is that that work has to be done in the managing of the property. It is not uh, someone doing work as, a, as another contract. If it's involved with the managing of the property, and that's, that, that's uh, in the bill as it stands. Amendment 85 would remove ongoing property managing functions from the meaning of letting agency work when, when a property has been managed. And I consider that these functions form a core part of the, re the remit of many letting agents. And this amendment could narrow the coverage of the regulation. And therefore, I can't support that amendment. And I would invite Alex Johnson to withdraw Amendment 85 and ask the committee to support my amendments. Anyone else wish to comment? So, Alex, can I ask you to wind up and press or withdraw your amendment, please? I will press my amendment uh, 85 in this case. There, I have absolute faith in the intent of the Minister, but I am not 100% confident that the wording that appears here has the effect that the Minister uh, uh, intends. Uh, and as a consequence, I think we have an issue here still to clarify. So, therefore, press my amendment and look to continue to uh, inquire into this before stage three. So the question is that Amendment 85 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? No. We're not agreed. We move to a division. Those in favour of Amendment 85, please show. Those against, please show. So uh, the result is yes, three, no, four. So the amendment is not agreed to. I call Amendment 86 in the name of the Minister already debated with Amendment 68. Minister, to move formally. Mm -hmm. The question is that Amendment 86 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 87 in the name of the Minister already debated with Amendment 85. Minister, to move formally. The question is that Amendment 87 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We're not agreed. We move to a division. Those in favour of Amendment uh, 87, please show. Those against, please show. Those abstaining. The result of the vote is yes, five, no, zero, abstention, two. So the amendment is agreed to. And the question is that Amendment 51 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are... So section. Oh, sorry, Section 51, not Amendment 51. Section 51. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. I call Amendment 88 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 68. Minister, to move formally. Moved. The question is that Amendment 88 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 89 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 68. Minister, to move formally. The question is that Amendment 89 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 52 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. And the question is that Sections 53 and 54 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed, and that comes to a natural break, so we'll have a five-minute um, adjournment.
Right, if we can resume. Uh, we move to part 1A, site licence, site inspection before issue or renewal. I call amendment 146 in the name of Mary Fee in a group on its own. Mary, to move and speak to your amendment. Amendment 146 in my name is required to protect tenants and residents on mobile home sites. Licences must not be approved where concerns or complaints have been raised. And in order to ensure that unscrupulous site owners do not continue to operate, the local authority must make an inspection to assess whether issues are being addressed or have been resolved. Citizens Advice Scotland have briefed in favour of this amendment as clients have approached them over issues that um, can be tackled under this amendment. And my amendment would improve governance, governance in this sector and provide additional safeguards for residents. And I move amendment 146. Anyone else? Minister? Amendment uh, 146 seeks to impose further requirements on local authorities in terms of their duties under the new licensing regime. And I agree that local authorities should be thorough when considering whether a licence should be granted. And I also agree that it's important for site visits to be carried out. However, I want to leave local authorities with some flexibility to focus resources on the most problematic sites. That's why I have lodged an amendment to the bill enabling ministers to issue guidance which local authorities will have to have regard to in carrying out their functions under the new licensing regime in the bill. The Scottish Government will develop that draft guidance in consultation with all stakeholders. This guidance would be able to cover site visits, including when these should be carried out, and set out various circumstances in which a local authority would be expected to inspect a site. And I believe that that strikes the right balance between flexibility and the clear expectation that in certain circumstances a site visit uh, will be necessary. I can reassure Mary Fee that I'm also keen to ensure that the regime is both robust and effectively enforced by local authorities. I believe the guidance route will be effective, but Section 60 of the Bill will also allow ministers to make regulations on the procedure to be followed when licensing a site. Those regulations could potentially include a requirement for a local authority to visit a site as part of the licensing process. I understand um, the, the thinking behind uh, Mary Fee's amendment, but as it stands, it would re require that the local authority visit a site if there had been a single complaint, even if the local authority had already visited that site in relation to that complaint and found it without merit. So I do believe that the amendment um, is not necessary and recommend that it is resisted. Uh, Mary, can I ask you to wind up and press or withdraw your amendment, please? Minister, for the, the comments that she has made. And in light of the comments that the Minister has made in relation to developing guidance and looking at when site visits should be carried out and the, um, the responsibility that is put on local authorities, I am happy not to move the amendment and look forward to that guidance being published. Thank you. So Mary uh, wishes to withdraw her uh -huh. amendment. Any objection? No. Okay. Um, we move to part 1A, site li licences, giving of reasons for local authority decision. I call amendment 90 in the name of the Minister, grouped with amend amendments 92, 96 and 97. Minister, to move amendment 90 and speak to all amendments in the group. Thank you, convener. During uh, their consideration of the bill, the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee highlighted the importance of a local authority providing reasons for its decisions. While there were measures in the bill as introduced that required a local authority to provide reasons in most situations, the committee believed that these should be applied more consistently. These amendments are in response to the committee's comments, which we have considered carefully. They will place consistent duties on a local authority to provide reasons for its decisions on a licence application, including renewal, a licence transfer and the revoking of a licence. Amendments 92, 96 and 97 mean that a local authority must tell the relevant people about its decision and provide reasons after those decisions are made. Amendment 90 addresses the earlier situation where a local authority is considering refusing its consent to a licence transfer. The authority is required to indicate the fact to the, that fact to the applicant and set out the reasons why, which allows the applicant involved 28 days to respond. 
I move Amendment 90. The, um, uh, has anyone else wished to speak? Sorry. The question is that Amendment 90 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yeah. That is agreed. Um, we move to Part 1A, site licence time limit for determining application. I call Amendment 91 in the, in the name of the Minister in a group on its own. Minister, to move and speak to your amendment. The bill as introduced included a provision that if a local authority did not make a decision on a site licence application within 12 months, the application was deemed to be approved. This was included in the bill as a backstop measure, and the Scottish Government's expectation is that local authorities will make decisions in a shorter timescale. However, at stage one, some stakeholders expressed concern that it would give a local authority an unacceptably long time to determine an application. In light of that, this amendment will remove the 12-month deadline from the bill and give, minister, give ministers the power to set time limits and regulations. This will enable the government to consult with the industry and local authorities about realistic timescales that can be put in place and adapted as necessary. This amendment will also enable ministers to set different timescales for different types of application. This may be used, for example, to set a shorter timescale for a new and an existing licence than for an application for a new licence. I think Amendment 91 is a sensible way forward, and I move Amendment 91 in my name. To comment? Okay, the question is that Amendment 91 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We're not agreed. We move to a vote. Those in favour of Amendment 91, please show. Those against, please show. The result of the vote is yes, five, no, two. The amendment is therefore agreed. I call Amendment 92 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 90. Minister, to move formally. <coughs> the question is that Amendment 92 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. The question is that section 55 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. Move to duration of part 1A site licence. Call amendment 93 in the name of the minister and a group of its own. Minister to move and speak to the amendment. One of the issues raised during the stage 1 consideration of the bill was the move to fixed term licences of, of three years from assistance, a system where licences run in perpetuity. Fixed term licences provide a regular check that a site licence holder continues to be a fit and proper person and an opportunity to review and update site licence conditions. I therefore don't support a system where licences run in per per perpetuity, which is the system we currently have, and it has proved to be weak and ineffective. I have listened to the points raised by stakeholders at stage one, and in light of that, this amendment seeks to change the, the bill so that licence periods run for five years rather than three. This longer period will give greater stability to site owners and reduce the administrative work for local authorities. In the committee's stage one report, it highlighted the importance of clear, accurate information being provided to residents and site owners on the changes that are meant in practice. That is something the Scottish Government has committed to doing when it puts the new licensing system in place. Other Government amendments to the Bill will also further strengthen the, the residency provided by agreements under the Mo Mobile Homes Act 1983 and it will make it clear that right, that right remains even if a site owner loses her, his or her licence. This amendment provides greater stability for residents, site owners and local authorities while keeping the important principle that a site licence is for a specific period of time. I move the amendment. Anyone else wish to comment? The question is that Amendment 93 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Not agreed. Um, they'll move to a division. Those in favour of Amendment 93, please show. Those against, please show. The result of the vote is yes, five, no, two. The amendment is therefore agreed. The question is that section 56 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. We move to duty to inform where change, period and offence. I call amendment 94 in the name of the minister, grouped with amendments 95, 107 and 108. Minister, can I ask you to move Amendment 94 and speak to the other amendments in the group? Thank you, Convener. The amendments make it an offence not to provide 
a local authority with the relevant information on changed circumstances in specific timescales. If convicted of an offence, someone can be fined up to level three in the standard scale, which is £1,000. These amendments strengthen the measures already in section 57 of the bill that require a site licence holder to tell a local authority of any, of any relevant changes in circumstances. With the move to five-year licences rather than the three years originally in the bill, it's even more important that licence holders are required to tell a local authority if their circumstances change. I therefore ask the committee to support these amendments and I move Amendment 94. Anyone else wish to comment? <coughs> okay. Um, the question is that Amendment 94 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is... No. Can you say no, please? <laughs> not just shake your head. <laughs> the question... So we're not agreed. We move to a division. Those in favour of Amendment 94, please show. Those against, please show. The result of the vote is yes, five, no, two. The amendment is therefore agreed. <coughs> Call Amendment 95 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 94. Minister to move formally. The question is that Amendment 95 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We're not agreed. We move to a division. Those in favour of Amendment 95, please show. Those against, please show. The result of the vote is yes, five, no, two. The amendment is therefore agreed to. The question is that section 57 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call amendment 96 in the name of the minister, already debated with amendment 90. Minister to move formally. Moved. The question is that amendment 96 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Call Amendment 97 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 90. Minister to move formally. The question is that Amendment 97 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 58 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 59 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Uh, we move to power to make provision in relation to decisions and appeals, and I call Amendment 98 in the name of the Minister, grouped with Amendments 99 204. Minister to move Amendment 98 and speak to the other amendments in the group. Thank you, Convener. Amendments 98 to 104 respond to, to points helpfully made by the Delegated Power and Law Reform Committee in their Stage 1 consideration of the Bill. They had a concern that the power in Section 60 of the Bill in relation to appeals was too broad and didn't reflect our stated policy intention. The amendments are therefore proposed to clarify our policy intentions. The various amendments to Section 60 of the Bill in Amendments 98 to 104 ensure that Scottish Ministers can make regulations covering the administrative procedures to be followed for the various measures under the Bill. For example, procedures around issuing and renewing a licence and also the procedure to be followed in relation to appeals. I, I don't intend to go into detail on the further uh, detail of these amendments at this stage and, and would ask the committee to support all of the amendments in the group and I move Amendment 98 in my name. Comment? No. Thank you, Convener. I just really wanted to make a very brief comment. Um, in, in general terms, I am supportive of what the, the Minister is, is trying to achieve, but my concern with 98 is that this would be done through negative procedure, and I have a concern around lack of um, scrutiny, uh, and I wonder if the Minister could perhaps make a further a comment on that. Well, we're providing, um, it came, as, you, as I said earlier, from the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee, and we were providing them with a detailed explanation in the supplementary Delegated Powers Memorandum lodged on my behalf after Stage 2. Um, the main amendment is, is Amendment 90, which is adjusting the focus of the power. The others are consequen consequential um, amendments, but we're doing this to satisfy what the Delegated um, Law Reform Committee requested, and that's how we're proceeding. Thank you for that. The question is that Amendment 98 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. I call Amendments 99, 100, 101, 102, 103 and 104, all in the name of the Minister and all previous deba previously debated. I invite the Minister to move these amendments on block. Moved. 
Um, does anyone object to a single question being put on these amendments? No. Okay, the question is that um, the question is that amendments 99 to 104 are agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question then is that section 60 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. agreed. Call amendment 100. We move to. Part 1A, Site Licence, Fit and Proper Person Test. I call Amendment 105 in the name of the Minister, grouped with Amendments 147, 148 and 106. Minister, can I ask you to move Amendment 105 and speak to all amendments in the group? Thank you. Amendment 105 is an amendment which makes it clear that local authorities must have regard to whether a site owner has breached an agreement under the Mobile Homes Act 1983 in applying the fit and proper person test for site licensing decisions. These are personal contracts that individuals have with site owners with which local authorities are not usually involved, but which are very relevant to how site owners conduct their business. This amendment will ensure that local authorities can take into account all relevant factors when making decisions about site, site licences. Amendment 106 is a technical change which specifically enables local authorities to share information relevant to the application of the fit and proper person test as part of the process of making site licensing decisions. This will enable great, greater consistency of decision making across different local authorities and reduce the risk that a site owner may pass the test in one area but fail it in another due to lack of relevant information. I'll turn now to, to Mary Fee's amendments 147 and 148. These seek to make explicit that a local authority must, when running the fit and proper person test, take into account any issues around the site owner providing utilities to residents. For example, taking into account a situation where a site owner has been profiteering from providing utilities when running the fit and proper person test. We believe this situation is already covered in the bill as a local authority must have regard to all the circumstances of the case, and this would include any profiteering from utilities. However, I recognise the Bill does set out some of the more important matters on the face of the Bill, and I am happy to include th this issue in that category. However, there are some uh, issues around Mary's Fees Amendment as they stand, which we would need to do some further work on. Specifically, I want to ensure that the correct guidance and the correct bodies are identified in the legislation. I am therefore happy to bring forward an amendment for Stage 3, which is specific on the matters that Mary Fee has raised, but which also takes into account the further work we need to do in identifying all the relevant guidance. And I would hope that that undertaking is sufficient for, for Mary Fee to agree not to move amendments 147 and 148 today. And I would ask the committee to support my amendments 105 and 106, and I move amendment 105. Can I to speak to amendment 147 and the other amendments in the group, please. Thank you, convener. Um, and I, I will be um, very brief, and I won't... Um, rehearse the, the comments that I was um, initially intending to say. Um, just following on from the Minister's comments in relation to my amendments 147 and 148, which do seek to provide additional protection for residents of mobile home sites who may be subjected to profiteering. I am grateful for our comments and I am happy not to move them, given the assurances that the Minister has given me. Okay, the question is that Amendment 105 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. Um, call Amendment 147 in the name of Mary Fee, already debated with Amendment 105. Mary, to move or not move? Not move. Uh, the member wishes to withdraw the amendment. Yeah, oh, okay, right, sorry. The question is then 148 to be agreed to. Mary, to move or not move? Not move. Uh, the question is that section 61 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. The question is that section 62 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. Call amendment 106 in the name of the Minister, already debated with amendment 105. Minister to move formally. Yes. The question is that amendment 106 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 107 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 94. Minister to move formally. Moved. 
question is that Amendment 107 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 108 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 94. Minister, to move formally. Moved. The question is that Amendment 108 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We move to power to vary maximum fine. I call Amendment 109 in the name of the Minister and a group on its own. Minister, to move and speak to the amendment. Amendment 109 removes the power for ministers to vary the maximum fine for licence offences. I noted the concerns expressed by both the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee, which were supported by this committee at Stage 1 report about this power and the suggestions for amending it. It is not clear, however, how this provision could be amended to meet the, view the views expressed by the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee. I have therefore concluded that the safest course of action is to simply remove the power to vary the maximum fines, and that is what Amendment 109 does. I move Amendment 109. Anyone else wish to comment? The question is that Amendment 109 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yeah. We are agreed. The question is that Section 63 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yeah. We are agreed. <coughs> we move to improvement notices and penalty notices. And I call Amendment 110 in the name of the Minister, grouped with Amendments 111, 112 and 113. Minister, can I ask you to move Amendment 110 and speak to the other amendments in the group? I'll speak to all the amendments in this group. Amendment 112 address a stage one concern by removing the provision which sets out that residents would not need to pay the site owner for utilities such as gas and electricity in the event that a penalty notice is issued by a local authority. Such a requirement could lead to utility bills not being paid and potentially res residents having their services cut off. And while I recognise the need for appropriate penalties for site owners who do not comply with the terms of this legislation, I do not want these to impact negatively on residents, and this amendment will achieve the right balance. The, the remainder are technical amendments which affect the period set out for a licence holder to carry out steps for an improvement order or a penalty notice issued by a local authority. An offence cannot be committed until the period set out in the notice expired. And I ask the committee to support all of the amendments in the group. And I move Amendment 110. Anyone else wish to make any comments? Okay, the question is that Amendment 110 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. <coughs> I call Amendment 111 in the name of the Minister. Already debated with Amendment 110. Minister, to move formally. Moved. The question is that Amendment 111 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that section 64 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 112 in the name of the Minister. Already debated with, with Amendment 110. Minister, to move formally. The question is that Amendment 112 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 113 in the name of the Minister. Already debated with 100, Amendment 110. Minister, to move formally. Moved. The question is that Amendment 113 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The question then is that Section 65 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 66 to 69 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. We move to guidance on operation of Part 5. Call Amendment 114 in the name of the Minister in a group on its own. Minister, can I ask you to move and speak to this amendment, please? This amendment enables ministers to publish guidance about the operation of the provisions in the bill and mobile home site licensing. It also requires that local authorities have regard to this guidance when carrying out their functions in relation to the licensing regime. I listened to the concerns raised during stage one that there is not enough information about how the new regime will operate and about how local authorities will enforce the regime. And I agree with the committee's recommendation that is that it is important that residents, site owners and local authorities have clear and accurate information. It has always been the Scottish Government's intention to provide information to accompany the new licensing system, including guidance for local authorities. The Government's view is that local authorities should be able to take a risk-based approach and focus their work on sites with problems. This would be enhanced by local authorities being required to take into account published guidance when carrying out their duties. However, the bill as drafted does not give ministers the power to issue guidance to which local authorities must have regard, and this amendment addresses this. 
I move amendment 114. Anyone else wish to say anything? Okay, the question is that amendment 114 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. <coughs> Uh, we move to agreements to which the Mobile Homes Act 1983 relates, and I call Amendment 115 in the name of the Minister, grouped with Amendment 116. Minister, can I ask you to move Amendment 115 and speak to both these amendments, please? Thank you, Convener. The committee wanted to be sure that residents had a clear right to remain in a site if the site lost its licence, and these amendments make sure that that is the case. These amendments replace the current provisions in the Bill on residents' rights with a new, even stronger section. The amendments also address the Committee's concern that there was not a measure in the Bill to prevent the cost of enforcement action being passed on to residents and pitch fees. These amendments now do that. So if a local authority recovers the cost of enforcement action from a site owner, that site owner can't pass the costs on to residents and pitch fees. And these amendments address two important areas of concern for residents, and I invite the committee to support them. I move Amendment 115. I wish to comment? Okay, the question is that Amendment 115 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 70 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The question is that Section 71 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. I call Amendment 116 in the name of the Minister, already debated with Amendment 115. Minister, to move formally. Moved. question is that Amendment 116 be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. And that ends consideration of amendments for today. Um, the committee will con uh, continue its consideration next week. Um, for the remaining amendments to the Housing Scotland Bill, and we will also consider petitions PE1425 in the clo on the closure of local DVLA offices in Scotland and petition 1481 on blacklisting. The committee will also consider its annual report, and I now pleasure in closing this meeting. Hello.